Welcome everyone here in the sanctuary at Mayfield Salisbury and to all those of you who are at home online, a very warm welcome for our watch night service leading in to Christmas Day. In this beautiful candlelit atmosphere, in this sacred place, on this night of wonder and anticipation, we gather together. The Advent candles are lit and we'll light our Christ candle after midnight and wish each other a very happy Christmas, for this is a time of joy to the world, of great happiness, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas time. It's wonderful to celebrate and to worship together this evening, to take these moments to sing carols and to hear the Christmas story once more and to be joyful and hopeful and thankful. We'll go through our service mostly unannounced and one part will flow into the next. The numbers of the hymns are on the order of service of the carols and uh, they're in the purple hymnaries that are in front of you and we'll stand to sing when we sing the carols together. We are taking a collection and making donations at Christmas time this year for Christian Aid and for Crossreach, which is the Church of Scotland's social care arm. And if you'd like to leave a donation on your way out, there'll be a collection plate there. You'd be very welcome to do so. May hope and peace and joy and love be in our hearts as we approach and celebrate tonight the coming of God to his people in Jesus Christ. Our prologue, this tonight is the meeting place. This tonight is the meeting place of heaven and earth. For this tonight is the stable in which God keeps his appointment to meet his people. Not too many holy here, not too many perfect, not all familiar to each other. But if tonight only strangers and dreamers met in all of our humanity, that would be enough. For Bethlehem was not the hub of the universe, nor was the stable a platform for the famous. It was in an out-of-the-way place that God kept his promise then and does so now. To there and to here, God sends his Son. This, tonight, is the meeting place of heaven and earth. Let us sing together, 306, O come, all ye faithful.
Descent, a Christmas poem by Malcolm Geit. They sought to soar into the skies, those classic gods of high renown, for lofty pride aspires to rise. But you came down. You dropped down from the mountains sheer, forsook the eagle for the dove. The other gods demanded fear, but you gave love. Where chiseled marble seemed to freeze their abstract and perfected form, compassion brought you to your knees, your blood was warm. They called for blood to sacrifice their victims on an altar bled. When no one else could pay the price, you died instead. They towered above our mortal plane, dismissed this restless flesh with scorn, aloof from birth and death and pain. But you were born, born to these burdens, born by all, born with us and astride the grave, weak to be with us when we fail and strong to save. Shall we come together in prayer before Christmas? Let us pray. 
Lord God, on the eve of our wonderful celebration of your coming to earth in Jesus Christ, we pause together. We steady our busy minds. We still and quiet our souls within us. When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came to earth as a man, God living in this world, Jesus the Messiah. You came to our world and walked alongside us. You spoke of a new kingdom of God. You walked humbly and served those who were ignored and discarded. You healed broken hearts and you raised up those whom life had knocked down. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of the world tonight? Not the friendly darkness that we have when sleep takes tiredness away, but fearful darkness for people around the world. That war will end, or peace will come into their lives, or food will come to the hungry, or pain and loss will be eased. Will you come into that darkness, Lord? Will you come into the quietness of this city? Not the friendly quietness of hugs and holding hands, but the silence when the phone has not rung or the chair is empty. Will you come into that darkness, Lord? Will you embrace the lonely? And will you come into the dark corners, the quiet places, the tender spots of all our lives? We know that you have the power to bring peace and fullness of life. You came to us all those Christmases ago, a baby born into poverty in a stable a man who lived and died to transform us and the world, speaking of forgiveness and new life and new birth. And still you come now. You come to us with your arms outstretched. Will you come into our lives tonight if we open them to you? You came to our world and walked alongside us. We wait with expectation for the new ways in which you will break into the darkness now, into the every day of our lives. May you be born in us again this Christmas time as we wait for your light to dawn. Amen. Hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, God shared his plan with people of great insight. People like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Micah. And he told them to proclaim the good news of the coming of a servant king who would be a savior. Isaiah. The Lord will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jeremiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is right in the land. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. And Micah. Bethlehem. Though you are a small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, 
in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Perhaps the greatest prophecy of Jesus' coming was written a full 700 years before the events of that first Christmas in Bethlehem by Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Christmas story from Luke's Gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This shall be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Amen.
Merry Christmas, everyone. Will we turn to those around us and wish each other a very Merry Christmas? And shall we now sing it together? Shall we sing together? We wish you a Merry Christmas. Let's sing again while we're on our feet. Number 313, See in Yonder Manger Low. And I shall light the Christ candle as we do so.
Please be seated. I shall offer for us all a prayer for Christmas. Would you wish to join me in prayer? Let us pray together. This Christmas day, we are amazed once more that you, the God of the universe, the all-powerful and all-knowing deity, should make himself so small, so vulnerable and so humble, and be born into our world. Lord God, you have made this night holy by the birth of your Son, Jesus. Upon him rested all your grace, and through him has come all your mercy. Let his light shine within our hearts tonight. Shine brighter than all of our Christmas trees and our lights and our candles, beautiful as they are. Help us tonight to be happy and be joyful at your everlasting love through him. Loving God, May the light of Christ and the blessing of you, Lord God, be in our hearts. Be with our families and our friends this Christmas. Be with those near to us and those who are far away and break into the lives of people everywhere, bringing your joy, your peace, your hope and your love a song of praise on their lips and celebration in their hearts. Will you walk beside each one of us tonight, Lord, and throughout the Christmas season and be alongside us as we celebrate later today, happy and rejoicing in the good news that Christ is born today and praising you for the wonder and the joyfulness of that news. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God is with us. Glory to you, God, in the highest. We offer you these prayers in the name of Jesus our Saviour born to us this and every Christmas. Amen.
Shall we say together the words of our closing responses on the order of service? Hope looked down and saw despair. I will go there, said Hope. Peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said Peace. Love looked down and saw hatred. I will go there, said Love. Joy looked down and saw sorrow. I will go there, said Joy. Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said Light. The source of hope, the prince of peace, the bringer of joy, the king of love, the lord of light, came to our world and walked alongside us forever. And now, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and be with all of our families and our friends this Christmas day and always. Amen.